is a special occasion, as you all know. We already had two uh, thrilling sessions. The opening was uh, really inspiring. I think the general sentiment that uh, brought us uh, to to many, uh, uh, you know, to develop the World Academy and the World Academy accompanied so many of these momentous events in the past uh, century. Um, but Eleanor Roosevelt with the Declaration of Human Rights. So many, many individuals that uh, are part also of the history of the World Academy as they were founding fathers or founding mothers of, of, of our organization. Uh, and uh, uh, we, we, we bring uh, forward their own legacy. Uh, so since we talk about legacy, we also have to talk about the future. How do we envisage the academy, we, the academians, how do we want to bring forward the flame of the academy? How do we want to translate this tradition in something practical, meaningful, that appeals to human consciences, that appeals to people in general, so that our contribution is meaningful, uh, so that we have, uh, we are attuned with the society and we bring together science, economy, politics, and all the expertise that uh, somehow contributes to the life of the academy itself. So the essence of our debate now is why was, why the World Academy? What is the World Academy for you? Uh, and this is really the question that, that we have, the lingering question for all of you, and we will start in a moment. Uh, why was, what was represents? And, uh, and I would like to uh, remember uh, something personal. When I, I started uh, contacting the World Academy and I had uh, the first meetings at the United Nations, with Gary and, and Ivo and many others, uh, I was intrigued by the Academy. And then I spotted this, uh, the, the logo, the, the, the pin uh, that, that we have, uh, that as you know, is a small circle, uh, is a sphere, is a, actually are two hemispheres uh, in, in one uh, that resembles the United Nations logo. In fact, it's also a sphere. And this sphere, the, the, the one of, uh, of the World Academy, as you know, is green and blue. Blue is actually like the human blue, and green is a, a, a light dance, I ask myself. And I ask also get a, a clear answer because uh, everybody has his own interpretation. And so I won't tell you what they told me at that time. Uh, I would like to hear from you what this green and blue represent? What is the logo of, of the World Academy for you? Uh, how this epitomizes or symbol, symbolizes the essence of the Academy itself? So, so many questions in one. Uh, uh, the question I repeat is unity in diversity. That is also a motto of the World Academy uh, and uh, how can we see things in different perspectives as well? I mean, the perspectives of the green and the blue. And who is on top? Is the green or the blue? Or can we reverse things around? Uh, I would like to start with uh, the, the first one that I see on screen. It is Marcel. And Marcel, uh, could you say something about yourself? Uh, why? Why? you and the World Academy. What attracted you into the World Academy? Why do you think that the World Academy uh, can also avail uh, itself of your contribution in the years to come? Over to you, Marcel. Thank you. To find the future for our Academy. And I will compare that with a project on which I attended as a young researcher in the United States, the man on the moon. And the man on the moon, I was there as a young scientist, and we had three tasks. First, to make a fantastic project, a vehicle 
that will bring somebody to the moon, that it was reliable, enough power, an excellent project. And the second point is, how, if you have the vehicle, how do you transport it to the moon? What is the roadmap? What is the way to go? How do you bring it there? And the third topic was, if the project, if that vehicle, if the Apollo reaches the moon, what is the mandate? Maybe to uh, put potatoes. We had other objectives. But that are the three topics. You must have an excellent project. Number two, you must be able to transfer it to the clients, to our clients. That could be the governments. That could be important bodies on world basis. And once it arrived, that body, that that body says that could be a government, that could be a European institution, an international organization. They say, oh, this is so important for us. I, um, this project, please execute it for us. Here is one million dollars in order to do it. Or that we say, oh, we will put a law, a wise law for the world or for a continent. Or one could give guidelines, recommendations following the law of WAS. Now, if I look and compare that what we are in the academy, we have in the academy and concerning the project, we have an enormous amount of ideas, many ideas. Everybody is putting something on the table, but we don't have the excellent projects which are really wanted by the clients, by the governments, or by the people who we should help in, in the creation of a world society. These projects could be all type of projects. And I think WAS should have three to five excellent projects, not a duplication of what somebody else is already doing about the uh, safety. So much information is already available. Economics, there are so many bodies to do that. About the nuclear, so many. We have really to find out on the basis of foresight studies, what are the three projects that, or the five projects that WAS should do. Excellent projects, which are prepared by a number of people that could be by 20 fellows working hard in order to get a good vehicle that reaches the moon properly. And the second point is that we have to find out kind of a way in order to uh, transmit the mechanism. This means uh, we, have, we have really a to transmit a mechanism. We should really know exactly what we really need to transmit it. We should have authorities to help us. We should have mechanisms in order to bring it to the so-called time. And the problem is the clients, we really have to define what are our clients, the national organizations or others. That is what we have to do in order to get a, a solid advice, which is very important and plays an important role into the so-called the overall world society. And in order to do that, that is not so easy. And I think us had to define the project in the future, have to find mechanism to transfer it, find mechanisms, find authorities who can help that. And number three, that should be projects which are really wanted by the client. And I think on point number one, we have no project, we don't have the real project, we don't have a mechanism, and we don't have the clients who is presently using WAS. In my life, as director at the European Union, I made once one project, it was called VAMAS. It's not so important. That was worldwide to get for toxicity rules put together. And there I was able to go to the G7, G7. That is America, that is Germany, that is Canada, that are the seven big countries in the world. I did that seven years ago. And Mitterrand, the French president, he got it approved. So we got an excellent VAMAS program. We were transferring it via the president. And finally, he approved it. So the seven countries approved the project. What does that mean? That was a project which exists now 20 years. We get still the seven countries yearly an amount of money 
to execute it. And that project is executed by many scientists from in the United States, from MIT, in Tokyo University, is also a country from the G7. We also are doing it in Europe, in Germany. The, the seven big, big countries are still actively participating in this project. And that is what I think we should do for us. We should really try to find the mechanisms, to find the people who can prepare solid projects, which are unique, of great value, not competitive with others, which are really unique projects, which you should define on the uh, studies, which are made, and then we should find people, uh, uh, authorities uh, on one or another area who can bring it to the clients. That could be on economics, that could be politics, that could be everything. But what I would like to see for us, that at the end, that are organizations preferably international ones, who said, we agree on that one, that is a project that you can carry out, or that we say, we are making a law for it, or a guideline that everybody had to follow. It is in that way that I see the VAS organization chairman. Thank you very much, Marcel. Thank you. Uh, you also spoke about telecommuting, if I understood correctly. You spoke about uh, uh, technology advancements uh, and a, a client-oriented services that you think the World Academy could develop. Uh, there is a question from Jerome Glenn that maybe you can uh, think through and then answer later on. Uh, he's asking, will quantum computing override blockchaining security? This is a question maybe is, uh, uh, is related to what you, 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 you say or your expertise, for sure. Uh, the next to speak uh, is Fabi, Fabi Konduri, um, is the only uh, uh, lady, by the way, in, uh, among the speakers. Uh, so Fabi, uh, let's go back to the main question. Uh, you know, what is the logo of the World Academy for you? This blue and green, what it does represent? And where is blue and where is green? What is on top uh, of your priorities? And how do you see that evolving? Uh, and please say a few words also about yourself, about your interests, about how do you see yourself uh, professionally, uh, uh, not growing, but certainly professionally involved with the future of the World Academy. Over to you, Fabi. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, well, uh, thank you very much for having me uh, in these very inspirational uh, discussions. I am an economist by training, econometrician, mathematical economist, I would say. Uh, but uh, most of my life, I've been working in interdisciplinary framework. Most of the questions that I see unanswered, and at least the questions that um, attract my interest, are interdisciplinary, and I see uh, a big need for interdisciplinary work. Uh, the solutions uh, to our problems are interdisciplinary. However, we work in silos. I am a professor at uh, the Athens University of Economics and Business. I've been uh, in various uh, universities in the UK for 18 years, uh, Cambridge, uh, UCL, LSE, and so on. I've been in economics departments, but throughout my life, I've been working in interdisciplinary frameworks for solutions that have to do with the transition to sustainability. And this is my main uh, worry and uh, my main endeavor with regards to the academy. I see the academy having the potential of bringing together many disciplines and this potential for, is uh, it's more convincing in this academy. Universities are structured in silos of disciplines and it is truly difficult and it's a slow process of achieving this 
transformation. The uh, whatever intervention and impact the academy will have needs to translate into an impact for the lives of people, for the welfare of people. And such an impact really needs interdisciplinary frameworks. At the moment, we have a project. Our project is how we are going to respond to, to this um, simultaneous uh, problems, pandemics, I would say, that we are facing. We are facing the COVID pandemic, the huge economic recession that derives from it, and the um, imminent threat to social cohesion. And at the same time, we face the mother of all crises, climate change. And we know that at the moment, there is no country that is not experiencing the drastic effects of these three crises. And we are losing our lives and we are also losing welfare in terms of economic losses. So our project, as far as I see it, is how we can recover from this triple simultaneous crisis in a way that allow us to um, be hopeful for the future. How can we build back and how can we build back better? We have a, a moral responsibility to be, uh, build back better because the COVID pandemic related recovery packages are financed by national debt. So they are loans from the future generation. And at the same time, we are lucky enough to have an economic case for building back better. Recent simulations of the effect of green recovery plans worldwide confirm that a green blue economic stimulus is more growth enhancing than a return to normal stimulus. So we don't want to go back to stimulating and an aggregate demand boost that will lead to unsustainable consumption and, com uh, and production partners. We want to go beyond this fiscal stimulus and achieve a transformative public investments, transformative um, change that we shape a sustainable, fair, green digital transition and we leverage private sector investment. And the good news, of course, is that we have our blueprint. We have the Agenda 2030 and the SDGs and the European Green Deal and the Paris Agreement. Of course, all these three policies are very science hectic and they are absolutely interdisciplinary. We don't have 17 SDGs. We have one SDG and it's sustainability. And we try to make easier the implementation by explaining what sustainability is with the 17 SDGs. All this to happen, to be implemented, needs to be science-driven, interdisciplinary science-driven, and, and it also needs to be translated to the other stakeholders. Who are the other stakeholders? The politicians, the policymakers, the businesses, the financial institutions, the NGOs, the civil society. This is not something easy to be done. And I think this is our project. And um, I, if you allow me, I can, uh, in my second round of uh, comments, introduce two main um, uh, reports that try uh, to um, showcase the way forward and, uh, and showcase how we can actually implement building back better while we also respond to the immediate needs, uh, health and welfare needs supporting the vulnerable 
that this uh, crisis uh, has created. The Wealth Academy for me is a place where people that are committed to offering their um, knowledge to global welfare, people that are cautious of the social consequences and policy implication of knowledge are gathered together, bringing down silos and producing a way forward that is uh, robust scientifically, but also engaging all other stakeholders in the society in order to truly allow the possibility of implementation. Because implementation means that you have convinced those that will live with the plan that you want to implement. To convince stakeholders, to convince people, businesses, civil society, politicians, you need to engage them. And engagement means understanding. You create the capacity for all other stakeholders outside science to understand the solution and implementing. And at the same time, you create capacity within science to understand each other and produce a holistic solution that is relevant and hence implementable. So this is what the World Academy is for me. And blue and green is the world as a whole. If you look uh, uh, at the earth from a distance, we are blue and green. It is uh, the seas and oceans and uh, the um, land on which uh, people and uh, nature interact. And we are here for the prosperity of the planet and the people. I will, I will stop here. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Fabi. I, I agree with many of the things you said. Uh, and in particular, I want to remark one, one sentence, uh, the convening power of the World Academy. Uh, we are focusing on this session, in this session on the role of the World Academy. So what the World Academy can offer, can offer beyond the fellows, beyond uh, uh, the experts beyond the uh, academics that you know are part of our network. We are talking of the network of networks. So what you're saying echoes very much my thinking that we should definitely exploit our convening power uh, and use the, our facilities beyond the technology and its own failures because uh, you know, the convening power is not just made of uh, uh, a, a button to be clicked, but is what is behind you know, our knowledge, capacity, and uh, our commitment, most, uh, most important, the commitment that we do have for uh, the well-being of humanity. Uh, I am tempted now uh, to uh, switch to a young representative, younger than, than, than the others. You, Fabi is also very young, but I would go now for an even younger representative, Marco Vitiello, I can see here. Uh, Marco, what is green and blue for you? So this is the same question. Uh, how do you see this blue and green coming out on the horizon? And, and what, what would you like the was to be in the years to come? Well, I, I will arrive to the answer to that question at the end of my speech. And thank you, actually, because it is a very interesting question and it really is worth to give an answer to that. Uh, I would like to start by saying that the World Academy of Arts and Science was established with one precise objective, which was the creation of a transnational forum where scientists coming from every possible field of knowledge and from every possible side of the world could reunite to discuss potentialities and criticalities of the human development 
a forum where they could go far beyond the aims of their national and personal interests to recognize themselves as human beings who not only are defined by the same values, but who actually fight together for the same values. Well, 60 years have passed since that famous Christmas Eve, and not only the world has changed a lot dramatically since then, but the pace of this change has been increasingly accelerating year after year, leaving behind itself much of the human's capacity to concretely understand the complexity of the reality we all contribute to shape on a daily basis. And when talking about analyzing and understanding and even about finding solutions, I believe that we as the World Academy of Art and Science are literally one of the best organizations on the international scene, as we are capable of making the most out of what I believe to be one of our biggest strengths, which is diversity. The current WAS motto is um, leadership in thought that leads to action, but there are, there's actually another motto that you do not have recalled, uh, which is unity in diversity. And only a diverse and complex organization like the World Academy of Art and Science can actually have the means to concretely analyze and understand the complexity of our reality. But I want to be really clear about this. In 2021, analyzing and understanding and even finding solutions is not enough anymore. And when, when thinking about our future, we should ask ourselves the following question. What is the place we want for ourselves in the wider human system? And I, I really appreciated what uh, Phoebe said about finding solution and implementing solutions. I believe that the World Academy should really be able to attract multiple sectors of the global civil society to make sure not only that our voice gets heard, but that the solutions we find and provide humanity with get implemented. And if we had to think of a concrete strategy, I would say that we should follow a double path. On one side, we should be able to remain anchored in our values, in our core values, in our past objectives, which are the ones that have shaped our history of success through our history of success, whilst at the same time, we should be able to look towards innovation. Let's be mindful, let's be aware of the ongoing and upcoming changes that are occurring in the world. In fact, being anchored in our past values and objectives should not result in immobility. If we really want to become able to respond to change in a successful way, we must also be able to change ourselves. But what does changing mean it doesn't mean it doesn't merely mean being capable of adapting to change i believe that we the world academy of art and science we really have all the potentialities to become leaders of change to be among the main designers of the future of humanity and this means not only understanding the future but also producing the future by practicing the future. And how do you practice the future? And I can tell you this from my very personal experience. We can do that if we start attracting more young people to our organization. And I will now go a bit personal so that you will know more about my story. Um, the first time I got in touch with the World Academy of Art and Science, it was three years ago. Where, when I had the chance to participate as a speaker in the second uh, international conference on future education that was held in Rome. And what I remember of those days, at the time I was a, a young student, and what I remember of those days is this amazing and contagious feeling coming from being part 
of an international environment where the, some of the sharpest minds of the globe had reunited to discuss such an important topic like the future of education. And that feeling I got during those wonderful days, I believe that feeling to be a very natural asset of the World Academy of Art and Science that can be used to attract more people and that has, has to be taken to its full potential. But it's not just about attracting more young students, more young professionals, it's also about engaging them. And I believe that our future really pretty much depends on our capacity to get the most out of experience and innovation. And practically this means one very simple thing, building up a real concrete, truthful, and powerful intergenerational partnership where both sides, both the experts and the young professional, the young students get to learn from each other, get to work together to achieve the common goals, which are the goals of this organization. And I, I'm very positive about this as we already have a record of success. We have already moved in this direction and that was thanks to to the great job we have done with uh, Gary, with Donato, with Natalia, with Thomas, and many other members of the Academy, as many of my fellow colleagues uh, from YLN, from the pop movement, had the chance to actively be engaged in the activities of the Academy. So we do are on the right track, but I can tell you that we should not, no way we should be satisfied with what we have achieved. We can do much more in that direction. We can really enhance our global impact, our global identity. And I will conclude by saying just one, one more thing, and that is about leadership. And that also comes from my, my very uh, experience. I believe that the leader of the future, or better even, the, the leader of the present should be a person, and he is that person who is able to keep his own mind open to learning. He, being, leadership lies in the capacity to be a lifelong learner. And I believe that by building this strong intergenerational partnership, we as was can really forge a new form, a new experience of shared leadership and can really become an example the whole world look up to. And last thing, today I will tell you that today we invest one in young people, one year from now we get 1,000 and that's it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Marco. Thank you really. What, what you just spoke about, it's a program. I mean, I think we can subscribe to your program uh, for sure. You said many inspiring things, uh, genuine and, and real, uh, and, and certainly uh, resonate well to all the speakers today, to all the academians that are listening to you today. Uh, I, I like very much your intergenerational partnership concept. Uh, that definitely we should foster. We are trying to do our best in this direction, but more has to be done. And you also capture the essence of the Academy when uh, uh, you recalled your personal experience that somehow a few years before was also my experience, is the sense of genuine enthusiasm that is uh, something really inbuilt in the conscience of the Academians and that is forever young, let's say, it's forever young. So it's not a concept that changes with age. It's, uh, it, it obviously sometimes is more mature, but it's still uh, a, extremely vivid, extremely alive in, in all moments of our own expressions. So I also want to commend what you say, if I may, uh, in terms of your attitude to respond to change and, and to the fact that we, we should change ourselves uh, and, and be conscious of the continuous changing 
uh, that we produce in our own uh, soul and minds as, as we apply ourselves to uh, the issues at stake. Uh, so thank you very much. Be with us because we need uh, these kind of young leaders and this kind of mentality for young leaders uh, to be associated with World Academy uh, now and in the future. Uh, Chantal, uh, are you with us? Uh, I see you. Uh, so Chantal, uh, what is your experience? What attracted you to the World Academy? What is green and blue for you? What is on top? And uh, does it revolve in one direction or another? Tell us about yourself as well. And how do you see the future of the Academy moving forward? Thank you. Thank you so much, Donato. And I want to say that I agree with everything that's been said pretty much so far. And what I'll do is not repeat, but build. Um, and I was add one word I disagree with Fobe, but we've been back and forth and we've agreed. <laughs> so <laughs> this is the value again of the, as this platform, because I don't believe that we should build back better. I think we should be, rebuild better because we have an economic and financial system that crash in two months and basically deliver for the few at the expense of the majority and the people and the planet. And so we don't want to go back. We want to go forward and take this opportunity as the one window of opportunity that we have in probably in a generation to actually rethink uh, the whole system that we build that is no longer fit for what we're trying to accomplish and for the size of the planet and the size of our population. Having said that, uh, let me try to address the issues you've said. Uh, first is, my name is Chantaline Carpentier, so that's the way we said, very complicated French name. Um, I'm the chief of the UN Conference on Trade and Development here in New York, our headquarters in Geneva, not far from uh, some of you. And um, I've come to work with WAS through uh, Gary Jacob and uh, Mila Popova, Popo, Popo, Popovich, um, great people um, that, you know, where we exchange on issues that happen at the UN and how we could reach out some of these great minds out there um, to do exactly what has been mentioned. So these, these partnership, and I would extend on what Marco said, it's partnership, interregional partnership with the youth, but it's also partnership with women groups. It's also partnership with micro, small, medium enterprises, because the youth, the women and the micro, small, medium enterprises are the harshest hit by this COVID-19. This is not a, a you know, we talk about the, this, this crisis, that is exacerbating existing inequalities. And those are the inequalities that it exacerbate even more. Those for micro small enterprises, especially if it's women owned, 27% more likely to not survive the, this pandemic. If it's if the youth are basically having a major issues on job creation and, and entry into the work market and not being prepared by education system that we have to actually contribute to this, 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 this system. And also we have refugees and, and migrants, often from climate change, that also, the, the bottom line is anybody that is affected by this, by, by the, the, the system that we have should be at the table. Otherwise we will not develop responses that are, are meeting their needs. And so partnership by all means, and various partnership, multidisciplinary partnership, as has been said, because we need to break these silos, what I find for me to answer your question, um, the blue and the green, for me, we need a new economics for sustainable development. So the blue could be the blue economy, the green is the green economy, but there's so many more. There's the orange economy. This year we're celebrating the creative, the international year of creative economy, which is orange. We also have the purple economy, which is the care economy. And so we have many models that what we need to do now is is help our decision maker. They kind of know, they don't necessarily know exactly um, what type of policy, what model exists and help them with the transition. A lot of the decision maker, for instance, is on climate change, right? And on the SDGs. Okay, so here are the policies you may, that would actually bring us to meet the SDGs by 2030 or carbon neutral by 2050. Great. What's the political economy? How do I get there? Because even if I know, even if I knew 100% which policy to put in place, I'm most likely not to be able to put them into force because it needs this partnership and this the, the support of the population uh, and social cohesion to get there and trust. So I think one of the things that WAS need to do um, is the rarest and most valuable commodities that we have right now, which is trust. Trust amongst, amongst all these disciplines, trust amongst um, all of the part of, of the players and trust uh, in our, our communities 
that we actually can believe and work together and get there. And so I think it was just maybe the, the founders of WAS were just uh, at the, this epiphany and saw that we would come in 2021 with the blue and the green economy. Let's hope maybe we put a little orange thing around it and purple uh, thing around it. So we add the other colors. Um, the other thing then is this, so aside from the, so we should be working and implementing and documenting whatever has worked for this transition to work. We saw what happened in France with the policies. In Canada, we did something different. We need to start actually accelerate knowledge accumulation and accelerate and acknowledge sharing. And WAS doesn't have a, a parti pris, doesn't have, so it is a good position to actually share this information freely around, uh, amongst all the stakeholders. Um, the, the other thing is um, the scaling. So what we find, right, is that oftentimes projects do work at the community level. And then they work maybe at a county level, and then maybe they work at the state or a provincial level. But once you start scaling it, it falls apart because of that trust part, because of that cohesion part amongst the stakeholders. What is it that we, as a multidisciplinary across the world thinkers, can contribute to that? How do we do that? How do we ensure that these models that we've documented that work actually can be adaptable, adapted, and, and, and help the decision makers to do that. So it's, it's my short um, contribution. Hope it's useful. Thank you. Definitely very useful, Chanteline. Useful. Uh, one word about this concept of building back better, that those like yourself and I that are involved, we're involved with the United Nations know very well became very fashionable uh, after the disaster in Haiti in 2010, if I'm not wrong. I mean, uh, the country collapsed and then Bill Clinton, former president, came in with his recovery plan and the motto became very fashionable among disaster risk reduction specialists, you know, build back better. Uh, someone now like uh, uh, mm, we have a colleague online say, what about uh, uh, this is uh, uh, wisely who says, what about build forward? This is another way of seeing things or, or re re rebuild better. Yes, I mean, uh, there are all concepts that somehow uh, revolve around the, the construction. I mean, the construction of physical construction, but there is a lot to be rebuilt also mentally, not only physically. And only if we uh, change the approach uh, to society, uh, we can really have something sustainable. I mean, it's, uh, yes, uh, physical, but also mental. I mean, it, and uh, mental means so many other things. Uh, mental means attitude to work. It means education. It means uh, all the programs in which the World Academy is involved. Um, so uh, thank you very much, Antali concept of cohesion uh, and also because you spoke about how uh, because until now in this panel or in this discussion we are talking about what are you envisaging how, oh, how yes. you are a fantastic filmmaker uh, and so you you have a visual approach you translate concepts into images again the question for you is how would you represent the World Academy uh, in the future? Uh, you, you, have, you have given us a helping hand with this flashback from the, from the past. So now let's project the image of the World Academy to the future. What, in a few words, is for you the Academy uh, or is going to be the Academy in a few years to come? Yes, I'll try. First of all, good evening, everybody. Um, actually, as you know, I am a young university comma fellow of the academy uh, because I have uh, the great joy uh, joining the academy this year, practically. Uh, so I know a lot about it um, um, from this experience. Uh, what I can immediately say 
is that uh, uh, I was a little bit, you know, worried because um, uh, personally as character, uh, I am, um, you know, a kind of, uh, <laughs> of wild dog. <laughs> yeah, and in my life, I have always tried to avoid, you know, too many aggregation. Uh, because uh, I had a great um, feeling that uh, the great gift for a human being is the freedom. And normally, uh, the association uh, pays the risk to prevent from uh, too much individual freedom, the member. Uh, so my, I was, you know, honored to uh, have entered VAS, but a little bit concerned about what could have been uh, the experience to belong to such a prestigious and uh, great uh, academy. I can tell you, as a first result of my one year experience, is that I am extremely thankful to all the members with whom I have uh, been interacting, because what I have felt is a great feeling of freedom. Uh, means I have always uh, had the feeling that uh, the World Academy of Art and Science um, doesn't uh, have a kind of theory in their mind to um, say, uh, share with its members and outside. That uh, there is a kind of inner uh, philosophy and ethic, uh, which is very similar to what uh, uh, can be uh, the experience of a human life. Means we pass through the uh, problem we pass through the experience, but we are capable to elaborate them uh, with the freedom of our personal sentiment, intelligence, and then share. Uh, so that is uh, the first thing by which I am extremely happy to be a member, and I will try to be a useful member with my, say, humble possible of contribution. This opportunity was given to me through this video. Uh, I uh, have, um, uh, to be very honest, uh, I am not uh, a filmmaker in the classical sense of the word filmmaker in terms of being a director. Uh, I, in my life, I have been a producer. Uh, but in a way, all the experience which I had of my production were held with the uh, uh, director who were very close friends in my life uh, and uh, on subject where we were sharing uh, the, the concept that uh, uh, to be side by side, producer and uh, director uh, in a friendly way toward the goal of the film can be the real secret of, the, of one success for sure. That um, the, the product will be um, an opportunity of growth in your life, which I have experienced very deeply when with my great friend Gautam Ghosh, who is a very great uh, Indian film director, we have shared the experience to make a film uh, with uh, um, His Holiness the Dalai Lama. And we have spent uh, 10 years uh, meeting the Dalai Lama whenever was possible in uh, his uh, you know, conferences in, uh, in Dharamsala, in the teaching and initiation when he has come around Europe. And um, we have uh, practically, um, uh, say uh, the director and the producer uh, shared the experience that uh, we were growing within our uh, work in a kind of alliance. In the same way, this experience of the film on the on the VAS has been a great experience of growth, even if concentrated in a few weeks. The uh, filmmaker has been Raffaele, the young filmmaker, but thanks to Gary, who has somehow directed the idea of the film, the three of us, plus all the other beautiful collaborators, which have been so precious to make the film, have, uh, say, uh, constituted a team by which each of us has gained something. And I think, that the title of the film bring us to the question that you have put. Uh, so the flashback to the future is exactly what we are speaking about, means whatever we can conceive for the future comes from our human experience. 
our human experience become a a a through our memory uh, the, the feeling which we mm -hmm. we have within ourselves in the present in the present to elaborate them and make the source of a possible vision for the future so uh, uh, i think that uh, the the possibility to have a vision of the future especially in the spirit of us may bring to this uh, uh, point which uh, i share and i agree completely with marco vitello i think that it can be a kind of alliance between different generations i have felt this very strongly making this film in these days you have seen through the story of uh, us how it have been powerful uh, the famous 60s uh, personally i have been uh, um, i am a chemical engineer i i have an a phd in chemical engineering in the naples polytechnic and by the will of god in 68 i became <laughs> the president of the student movement so for me mario savio you know uh, the speech movement, what was happening in Berkeley, was the source of a, something which just deeply changed my life. And till today, I think that what happened in those two, three years in which uh, we were studying, but in the same time in the night, we were sharing, uh, you know, messages. At that time, there was not existing any other communication than the letters. So we went in the presidency. We typed with the uh, cyclo style messages which we were sharing with Nanterre, with Daniel Condendit, or in Berlin uh, with Rudy Dutschke. And uh, believe me, those were moments in which uh, the life of a poor young man changed completely. Now we have this experience, and now we have young generation who can uh, say, um, sh share with us the emotion and the enthusiasm of those times. I cannot forget that Bernardo Bertolucci even, having to dedicate a film to those years has chosen as title of this film, The Dreamers. <laughs> so in a way, our generation, for those who had the joy and the luck to be involved deeply in that moment of dreams, uh, remains together with um, whoever has uh, lived deeply the <laughs> historical happenings of the 60s uh, dreamers and i think we have to uh, share these dreams which are still alive but of obviously new dreams uh, uh, elaborated by the experience uh, which especially in these days of covid have to be very well understood and analyzed with our younger fellow so I have been very, very impressed by the words of Marco, which I thank, and I hope to meet even personally very soon. Uh, I presume he lives in Italy. And of all my other friends of this panel, because we are all thinking about the importance to put together these different experiences coming from the past, elaborated in this very difficult present, and to make it the opportunity for an immediate future where my feeling is that VAS can contribute to a great subject, which is humanization. I think that uh, even if I am uh, uh, deeply uh, grateful to technology, which permit this evening to all of us to be together, nevertheless, the, uh, say, compulsive distance, uh, which uh, the, the COVID oblige us, in the same time, I think that one of the elaboration that uh, is happening, uh, speaking with uh, people in, uh, in Rome or with whomever I'm capable to share, there is a great, great, great desire of humanization in the sense to go back to the possibility to share a hug, to, to put a, a, your hand on the shoulder of a friend and walk side by side to uh, express your sentiment and many more other things which can happen by the physical. We were risking, thanks to the seduction of the uh, virtual communication, to lose that uh, great treasure, which is the human uh, communication. Now COVID 
among the many damages that is creating something good probably is doing it is to make us very very you know uh, say appreciating the beauty of the hub so i think that the immediate future should be to uh, preserve and to uh, take at first place this great value of all of us which is the humanization and to apply this for keeping the greatest uh, uh, say subject of our dreams, share with the youngsters and try to make of this the immediate future of the academy and of what academy has, has done in all these 60 years, which is to try to create a better world. And this is my wish, my hope and uh, my conviction. <laughs> Thank you. Sergio, thank you very much, Sergio. Uh, for a newcomer, you have gone quite a long way. I mean, <laughs> you said you, you are a, a newcomer into the organization, but I can see that you know a lot of things uh, and that you are extremely wise and that you speak about the, the, the sentiments, the core sentiments that inspired our founding fathers and still inspire academians nowadays. Humanization is so important and it's so important to continue to be dreaming, as you said, echoing the film of Bernardo Bertolucci. And I know that all of us have uh, our own uh, secret dreams and all sorts of dreams uh, for, for, the good, uh, and, uh, for the good of humanity and, uh, and our dear ones. Uh, a hug, we also hope that we will exchange hugs uh, soon again even if this seems to be uh, off limits in this particular moment in history. Uh, uh, we have a, an eminent speaker among ourselves that has been silent until now, and he's Ketan Patel. Ketan, to go a step backward now, because uh, we spoke um, about, uh, I think it was Phoebe that spoke about uh, um, the, the importance of leveraging public-private partnerships. And this is uh, something that I know is very dear to you as a concept and is dear to you in terms of uh, uh, the new finance movement that uh, somehow you are spearheading. So tell us about this and tell us about the future of the Academy the way you see it. Thank you very much, Donato. What a pleasure to, to join the Assembly and to join the Academy as a fellow. Thank you very much. I was introduced to it, as you know, by Gary and by Mila, and um, I'm delighted to have worked with so many of you. Um, I know Chanteline very well, and I've heard Phoebe and been on a panel with her before, uh, and very much enjoyed what's been said. Um, if I step back a little bit, I lead an investing institution, but I trained as an economist and over a 30 year period worked in industry, technology, consulting, finance um, to arrive today as an investor. Uh, for the majority of that time though, my work was as a strategist. So if you like, it fell on me to think about um, what are the themes, the flows, the patterns, the discontinuities that would transform the past and deliver us a different future. And how should someone, whether it was a company, an industry, a country, uh, or a big theme in the world be positioned or repositioned? And what is the role that finance would play in that to make something happen? So if I fast forward to now, you know, my biggest wish would be that the World Academy um, sees its role not as a think tank of very smart people, but as an action tank that intervenes in the world to help big change happen. And, and in that sense, I think to do that, you know, we would need to make sure that we see the world from the perspective of the enormity of the changes that are now going through the world. So, you know, in only 50 years this century, we, we will add nearly 4 billion people to the planet. We're already outgrowing the functionality of carbon energies. We're interconnecting everyone on the planet digitally already. Um, and the last mile will be done probably in the next decade or so of people who are not included. The information industries are already superseding the industrial ones. And the value of industrial companies is declining, as well as their ability to deliver jobs. And so 
we have enormous value being created and destroyed at the same time. And America having been the sole superpower is seeing the EU, China and India emerge as other great powers. So not only the planet is challenged and our survival, but the fundamentals of peace, prosperity and freedom, which are themes I think that Sergio, Phoebe, Chanteline, you know, in the beginning, you know, in the very start of this, Marcel and also Marco have touched on. So I think history tells us we're in one of the most profound transitions because it's not often in history you add nearly 4 billion people to a population. So, you know, I think we are in a strategic place um, and the need for real strategic thinking. Unfortunately, most of our books on how to think strategically have been written by military strategists about how to win wars, how to fight other people, how to destroy other countries and other armies. And so there is a need for us to think enormously differently, much more from the heart, and to find solutions that allow humanity and the planet to survive. Whereas most of our treaties on strategy, whether they were ancient Chinese Sun Tzu or Machiavelli's The Prince or Chanakya in India, they were built, or Clausewitz, you know, they were built off warfare. And so we don't have the language almost to know how to communicate these big strategic ideas about how to architect a different future. And so we're struggling with some, something like that. I think um, if I had to make a wish for the academy, I would say it's important that the academy is the academy, the world academy. So it is global and it's for the whole world, but it's also about art and also about science. You see, too much of our strategy was driven by the logic, the analysis, but actually to not be driven by the past, but to really dream about the future, you need creativity, you need the arts. And real strategy is built not just on understanding now, but envisioning, dreaming a different future. And most of the great scientific breakthroughs, including Einstein's breakthroughs on, on relativity, were based on dreaming, making a leap that no one else could make if they just analyzed. And herein, I think, lies the key to the World Academy. What we should be, I think, thinking about together is how we bring the arts and the sciences, but the most heavyweight arts and sciences we can from all fields together, almost as we saw in, I think it was the fifth conference of the Solvay conferences on physics. And it was um, 1927 and they drew together people who would end up being some of the leading Nobel prize winners and physicists of the world. And they reconceived what physics was really about. In there you had Einstein, but you had Neil Bohr's, you had Mary Curie, you had Dirac, you had you know, Neil Bohr's, you had people who, you know, Schrodinger, you had people who rethought what it was all about, what the world was about. I believe we face one of those kinds of challenges again, where we have to rethink the basis of our civilization, our, our living together and what it means. And that will require us to rethink every piece. The lubricant of that, of any civilization and rebuilding it is finance. And so, Donato, you're right. I had the pleasure of thinking with a project that was inspired um, and hosted by the United Nations. Chanteline was one of two hosts. Will Kennedy was another host. And our, our aim was to think about ways of changing capitalism itself, out of which emerged a project, which, which uh, I got to lead. And it was to think about the future of finance, but particularly if money could be a force for good capital could be a force for good in the world. It is certainly a force for change, but can it be a force for good change? Um, I would love to see the Academy host an event where we have the leading scientists in the world and technologists and engineers, alongside some of the leading thinkers about the humanities, the environment, the planet, the different species, to re-architect a new deal for the whole world. And I know in America, it's a very politicized word, but it isn't for the rest of us in the world, right? We need a new way 
of conceiving how we live on in the world with each other. And so um, I think the academy has the relationships where people here, even on this particular panel, who represent the United Nations and the member states. It's not inconceivable that the survey of 2021 will be a different kind of dreaming about the future, combining the reality and the knowledge that we have now. So Donato, that, that would be my wish as a new member, thinking about the role of what we do and what we should actually do to change things. This is also a very good plan. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Ketan. Um, the New Deal, uh, arts and creativity. I mean, you, you echoed so many fundamental issues uh, that the World Academy represents and that want to bring forward. We all want to bring forward uh, the kind of uh, activities that you have been promoting and others have been promoting with enthusiasm, with a firm belief that we can make a difference. Uh, we don't know what difference, but we can certainly engage ourselves to the maximum, uh, making sure that we, uh, we, we gather strength with uh, the contribution of many other people. I mean, the quality of the people is so important. It's not also how many people will be with us, but the quality of the people that we can attract into the fold, it's so relevant. So this is also the essence of our discourse uh, of what uh, the World Academy should be doing uh, in uh, uh, linking up with an extended reality with so many different uh, uh, partners, so many different actors, uh, but also how we can recover or uh, foster the uh, internal uh, discourse, the uh, inside um, thinking of the organization. So in a sense, how can we uh, beef up, how can we support an internal thinking that becomes more coherent, more cohesive, coming from this multidisciplinary approaches that we all care about. Because one, one of the fundamental uh, elements of the, of the World Academy is this, is the difference and the unity as we have uh, reaffirmed today so many times. So how do we move from the diversity to the unit uh, and to the unity? This is, we still have some time. I would like to ask for short interventions, maximum two minutes each, on this basic question. Uh, you have expressed, all of you, a vision, an idea of what the World Academy should be doing. Now I would like from you some tips, practical tips, in terms of how to move forward. Uh, we will try to follow more or less the same order, uh, Marcel, are you with us? Uh, give us some hints of how do you think we should move forward? Only how you have only two minutes to Mr. Chairman, what I said before, that is what I like to repeat with some practical examples. I'm a member of the um, French Academy and what we are doing there, the universities, the government, the industry is following our advices. I'm a member of the Royal Society in London. What we are doing, people are following that. Who is sitting in the academy? That are high level people, people of great value. What has been mentioned a few minutes before, like for example, the Solve. I was also since years that I'm sitting in the Solve meeting. I was also in respect to we need more people of very high value in the academy. That is one of our points. We also need people in our directory, more people. And why not Nobel Prize winners, not only scientists, but high economists and everything. That is what we really need. What we need too is a recognition. The academy was, is not recognized. And many of the colleagues at uh, the round table where we are, they really express a lot of hopes and wishes and so on. I, wishes and hopes, we have enough. 
what we don't need is a mechanism that what we are doing is really recognized. I have still one example. In 1990, when I was director at the European Union, I was asked as director of the project, Europe is 30 different nations. How can we put them together? And the first point was in respect to the education. And what I did is the education, which was different in all countries, from Greece to Finland, all different. We created the Bologna Declaration with a master, and a PhD is the bachelor. And that is what has been used in all universities 10 years later. That is what we really need from VAS, recognition to do projects which of great value worldwide. And I think I have real difficult problems with, for example, the topics what we have in economics. There are excellent organizations like the OECD and many others. We cannot compete with those people. You have it in other areas, in environment, we cannot do much as was. You can do it much as your organization, but as was, we cannot do much because it is done by other people. Was can still play an important role by coordinating activities in the world and to give it a world dimension. But here, I think we really miss mechanisms, high level power people who could help. We really need also projects which are of great value for the user. That's more or less my, my problems, what we, what we have. We should not any further wish, there are too many wishes what we have in VAS but we cannot realize those wishes. Realize in a way that somebody else said that was a good job, what Vaas had done there. We will get money to Vaas because they are so excellent. That is what I really would like to see. We really need first excellent projects, well-defined projects, not in the air. A project, like I said, the Bologna Declaration, that was a project. We started from nothing at the European Union, and at the end, we got an agreement approved by all governments, approved by all universities in Europe. And it is in that way that we had to go. And I think also we need there much more valuable people. We need in VAS to recruit important people with power so that we can realize the real problems what we have. That is more or less my, my vision. We don't have the projects. We don't have the mechanism to realize them. And we don't have the clients who accept them. And uh, yeah, my, I think uh, yeah, we should try to work on those mechanisms, how to, how to do it. But wishes and so on, there are too many. And I think in a number of areas, we should not compete with a number of bodies. I see about climate change was mentioned, environmental problems were mentioned. I sit in these committees. I personally was professor at various universities, particularly in Belgium, in the Netherlands. I was at La Sapienza also teaching. I was also in Krakow, in Poland teaching. I was in New York teaching. I was in Tokyo University teaching. And I was director at CERN, the European organization. I was director at Max Planck Institute in Germany, and I was director at the European Union for research and education. And for the time being, I have one project and one wish, that is that we create a world system, education university system. And that is why I'm working on. I'm working at present on a system how could we get Europe, America, Russia, China, and Japan together on the basis of education? How could we create a uniform worldwide system so that the people start to understand each other as today they really don't understand each other and therefore we cannot solve any problem 
And education on that one is one of the bases. And for me, RAS is a place that is a project, and I think it is the most important project in RAS, that is the RAS education worldwide. How can we create that? What mechanisms are needed for that one? And who will support us financially and also morally in order to come to that uh, realization? And we should have similar projects on another topic, topics which are of great importance. And I think, and I can tell you, education is the foundation worldwide where nothing is going on. We have to go on. Thank you, Marcel. You have made your point, important projects. Certainly you'll find fertile terrain in the World Academy to, uh, to put the seeds of important projects that you, can, that you can think of. And the World University Consortium is also a creation of the World Academy, as you know, that deals with the, the issues of education that you just mentioned. So you can also find very valuable allies in the Academy. Uh, the next to speak is Fabi, Fabi Konduri. Fabi, again, uh, the uh, tips that you have, what are your suggestions? How would you put things in place on, according to your vision? Uh, but please, two minutes, I will. Okay, maybe it is uh, kind of useful if I introduce what I do, which uh, points to what I think is important as a way uh, forward. So I am a direct this European cluster for the sustainability transition that uh, involves uh, two research institutions that I direct. One uh, focus on socioeconomic and environmental sustainability, interdisciplinary research and innovation and uh, hosting many big interdisciplinary projects uh, funded from uh, uh, the European Commission, but also from uh, various international organizations, uh, projects that uh, have consortia of 30, 50 uh, universities and research organizations. Then I also direct this um, uh, sustainable development unit that collaborates with the uh, EIT Climate Kick, the European Institute of Innovation and Technology. I direct uh, the uh, European Hub, uh, which uh, tries to accelerate the results from research and innovation projects uh, to the uh, into the market, into the economy. So one important thing for me is, yes, uh, big, important research projects, and we can think whether these research projects should be affiliated with the World Academy or with the institutions that are represented at the World Academy, and then use the results from these research and innovation projects to accelerate them into the market, research commercialization, make available innovation to the market so that different stakeholders can really use them. And the third part of my work is a capacity building and dissemination. And I do that as uh, the uh, director of the European hub of the United Nations Sustainable Development Solutions Network, which is a network that tries to disseminate, to communicate the results of research and innovation and their acceleration to the other stakeholders, like I said before, policymakers, politicians, businesses, financial institutions, civil society, and the AGO. And of course, create capacity building. Capacity building is created through uh, universities, through reforming your universities so that they are aligned with the needs, not just of the current uh, um, socioeconomic situation, but also the future situation. And in order to understand what the future situation will be, you need to integrate the um, current pace, the unprecedented pace of technological uh, innovation. And of course, all this needs engagement, engagement of each and every stakeholder. So 
uh, my, e, e, uh, let's say, uh, closing remark, because I know I don't have lots of time, is that we need to engage in systemic innovation. We need to understand what are the bottlenecks and silos and, and, and also synergies of the elements of our current system and redesign a system that works better and can achieve the acceleration that is needed in order to uh, really um, be able to achieve the transformation that is needed so that we sustain our world. Uh, this is uh, crucially important and this is difficult. Thank you. Thank you, Phoebe. Thank you very much uh, for your approach and, uh, and recommendations. Marco, you're next. Please, Mark. Well, the tip I have for the, all of us is very simple. Let's collaborate more. In the last year, we already have within the Academy some intergenerational group of works and we have done wonderful things. Now, many junior fellows have been elected in WAS and they are ready to work hard and collaborate. So just let's just produce new projects together and let's work together and we can start to get to know each other during these very five days as we have three sessions about youth. So I invite you all to participate in those sessions and to uh, join our discussions. Let's get to know each other and let's start this intergenerational partnership and let's do it together. Thank you very much, Marco. Very clear and very productive. I mean, and uh, I think it's it's a way to go ahead. In any case, we have no alternatives. I mean, intergenerational dialogue and cooperation uh, to the point where we see results. I mean, we have to be result driven. We have to see that we are doing something meaningful. I mean, uh, many ways we talk. We have ideas. We have to exchange ideas, but. I think that we all agree that we have to be oriented towards specific targets, towards specific yes. achievements. Otherwise, we work in vain. Uh, the next one uh, to speak is, uh, after Marco, is, uh, is Chantal Lin. Chantal, you know, we spoke about uh, building back better. We spoke about rebuilding societies. Uh, now, uh, what's what's new? What what do you think can be done for the World Academy? I'm talking about the World yeah. Academy. How yeah. would you see the World Academy becoming more concrete and how? Yeah, and I agree with, uh, again, uh, it seems like Phoebe and I are uh, sisters from different mothers. I uh, totally agree with what she said. Um, but I also put in the, in the chat box that, um, you know, the recent anniversary of the UN at 75, um, they had a massive survey, and if you haven't looked at it, and the declaration from member state and the declaration from CSO, I invite everybody to look at it. But 87% of people basically are in agreement around the world. It's just statistically significant, uh, uh, done. Uh, it's not like the UN patting itself on the back. Believe that multilateralism is needed right now. And so at the time where we face a real pushback against multilateralism and nationalism and nativism, there is a willingness and a, a desire of the population around the world to address these issues together. And, and WAS has a role to play. It is true that there's many economics entities out there, but not all economic entities actually represent all of the member states and the stakeholders of the planet. Um, and we at the UN have some of that capacity spread around different agencies and we're trying to pull it together through the network of economists. Uh, but the help, the, the we we have about what ten years left to really uh, have a chance to transition towards these new economies. So I do believe that everybody needs to put their hand into transitioning uh, to there. Um, the 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 two two concrete things. One could be a campaign to ensure that the twenty the thirteen trillion dollars of stimulus packages that are being rolled out and helicoptered in right now are in the new economy. I think WASP with all the, 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 the partner that they have and all the fellows and the voice that it has 
could actually help with that. It could also help with the narrative on the hugging of the vaccines and the hugging of this money while, you know, and, and the narrative that if we are in this together and we are as strong as the weakest of the link in our health system. Um, and so we're not gonna get out of this COVID. If you wanna take a plane in, in, anytime soon, these vaccines need to reach the developing countries. So no point putting pressure on your prime minister or your president to get all the vaccine for you. And we, we to the West should be able to do something about in terms of advocacy to the voice of all the, and then the third one, uh, we saw the acceleration and Furby mentioned it and others of the for industrial revolution, everything is going digital. Yet we have 3.7 billion people that are not connected. And I'm not, and it's not enough to talk about the infrastructure. It's just not enough to connect and have the, the broadband. We need digital literacy. Who's gonna provide this digital literacy, the capacity and the financial literacy for the FinTech to the people that actually need, and those are again, the most vulnerable women, micro, small, medium enterprises. So is it something that we can do together? Because these people, these 3.7 billion people, if something is not done rather quickly, they will be left behind and they will miss another revolution and they won't be able to catch up. Um, I think the, the word I would like to end with is co-creation. Um, all of us have expertise and, and network that we can coalesce. It's just not sure to me how WAS can help us do that. And I want to finish with a quote. Um, Ketan, my dear friend, mentioned the, uh, the financial sector being the engine. Here's the latest from PricewaterhouseCoopers uh, study across 31 countries and seven industries. 72% of companies mentioned the SDGs in their reporting. Only 34% include the SDGs in their strategy section. And only 8% are, or 1% of the overall uh, sample are actually reporting quantitative measure to show their progress towards reaching target. As long as we're not gonna have comparable, homogeneous, uh, tar, um, a PPI that meant that the private sector has to report again so that the consumers can buy from the companies that do good and do well at the same time and the investors can invest in them. We're not going to uh, be successful in this um, transition. So that's my concluding word. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chantaline, for the many considerations and ideas that you have flagged. Uh, we have a session on multilateralism, as you know, so a lot of what you will be saying again or will be discussed again during the program. Uh, I think that is an important topic for sure. We have faced that in, uh, in various iterations uh, recently uh, as World Academy. Uh, now, I can see uh, that uh, I receive a message that we have a Benno Werlen who is supposed to speak. Uh, if he's with us, I would like to ask uh, Benno. Benno, yes. uh, good afternoon. Good, good afternoon. evening to you. Uh, I don't have the pleasure of uh, knowing you yet, but uh, I am doing it uh, uh, now in, uh, through, through this uh, facility. Uh, could you introduce yourself? Could you tell us, uh, you know, your association with the World Academy, uh, to what extent you are participating to our activities? And uh, in a few words, because you just now come in, what is your um, anticipation and what would be your expectation in terms of the future role of the World Academy? Benno, just a few words about yourself first. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, I'm a fellow for one and a little bit more than, than a year. And um, uh, I was uh, organizing and directing an international year of global understanding. And that's how I met uh, Gary and also Thomas Reuter. And they invited me to, to join the MAS. And that's uh, where I'm contributing now. And uh, the idea was now to present the declaration on the humanities um, uh, and the social sciences for sustainability, a project for WAS uh, that could be implemented over the next uh, years. The basic idea is that you don't have much time to implement uh, the sustainability development goals. Um, the, the changes are going faster uh, in the real world than uh, the, the solutions we are offering. And for us, uh, the idea is, uh, or the basic idea is that one of the problems is that 
the most international um, uh, activities and projects are all linked uh, to the ecological basic idea that has been put forward by Heckel some time ago when he invented the modern ecology. And that's the biogeologic and the top-down logic for nearly all UN projects. And uh, the idea is that the main drivers of change are everyday people with their everyday activities to change their habits and their routines. That's the main issue. And also respecting the cultural and regional differences and also the social differences, meaning that we need a solid bottom-up project, mobilizing people in the everyday world with, by respecting their cultural differences and their uh, social differences. And of course, um, that means to, to foster the cooperation of the social sciences and humanities, starting from the roots of the problem. That's the unintended or the accepted co uh, consequences of everyday actions. They are creating all the big uh, crises. So we need the top-down structure, but most of all, we need the mobilization from bottom up by respecting regional and cultural differences, overcoming the disciplinary silos. silos. And what you also need, and that's towards the end of, of uh, the declaration, uh, by people from uh, WAS, uh, Club of Rome, uh, UNESCO commissions, and so on, um, that we also need a new aesthetics. We need a new vision of the world, how people see themselves in the world, what they think what is important. And for that, of course, we need the arts and we need all creative people and young reaching also, especially younger generations to mobilize for new designs of life, for new aspirations, and not only working on problem-oriented solutions. We have to get rid of the problems, not only finding solutions for for the existing problems. And that's a more encompassing uh, uh, endeavor. And this is mainly in our view, uh, the job also of the humanities and the social sciences, not just following the pre-given structure of the bio -geo logic, but really taking people serious, trying to reach them and producing solution in the logic of everyday actions, where the cultural, the social, and the naturalists are coming together and are all globally interconnected. Thank, thank you, Benno. Uh, so not, not reactive, but proactive. And thank you for uh, giving us a glimpse of your project. More time has to be devoted to your very interesting initiative. Uh, next to speak is because uh, Benno spoke about uh, uh, also the, the artistic representation, the visual representation, would be our friend uh, Sergio Scapanini. Are you with us, Sergio? Have, yes. Uh, one minute, one minute to say a word or two uh, that you think are relevant for the future of the of WAS and the future of our collaboration. Well, when you have um, said that we would have uh, the opportunity to to launch a, a last thinking coming from the emotion of this evening. Um, and starting from Unity University, I have uh, had a kind of internal movement uh, very quickly. You know, Italy was born from uh, Unity University. You are Italian, you know better than me. Different region. At that time, it was impossible to believe that a Sicilian could have become the same national guy of Trentino Alto Adige or, uh, you know, Piemonte. And we did it. Now we are trying with Europe and uh, we are trying deeply to make one country of uh, people and, and countries who had made war like France and Germany for all their history. And now they are brotherly united. So this uh, 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 unity in diversity is possible to be achieved territorially. So my dream, just to close with a great dream, is that all our activity of us, I mean, in the field of uh, the social activism, like, uh, you know, the project for uh, Friday for Future, whatever it will be supported, you know, in, in this great moment of other movement, and for the women uh, like me too, 
or the Black Lives Matter and all the things which are in movement and uh, symbolically they are the son and daughters of the movement of our generation and we will try to support them. I dream that can be also transversally united by a common uh, say effort of the different uh, country of the world in the sense that if we move to have a better environment, this can involve Europe, Africa, Asia, you know, Siberia, all the, and this is a dream which can uh, uh, say, make uh, believable that uh, for our next generation, for whom we have to dream, uh, it will be possible not only to achieve this marvelous goal of social activism, but also to create a unity in diversity all over the world, as it has happened in small Italy in the 19th century, as it is happening in Europe in this century, it will have to happen for the whole world. And the whole world has to be united in diversity. This is my hope for this night, my dream, and my great uh, wish to, to uh, work uh, with us also to live to our next generation. That's all, two minutes. Last last word for among the speakers of this uh, session goes to Ketan. Ketan, would you like to conclude uh, with your thoughts in terms of the, the way ahead? How to go ahead, please. Brother Nadal, I'll keep it to a minute to keep us um, back to uh, give it back to you actually and to Jack, to Gary. So we only solve if we work together. So I would like to offer to architect with you this conference that is like Solvay, but architects the future of the world. Um, I, I think I can offer two things. One is I've worked over a decade with a group that hosts some of the leading scientists in the world. And two, over my career, and particularly over the last um, one year, I've had the opportunity to put together 30 of the largest financial institutions in the world, representing $100 trillion, nearly a third, of the world's money. And I think if we decide what it is that we want to change in the world, which I imagine will be new energy, poverty elimination, digital education and connection and new finance and so on. But we agree that agenda of five big things that we think we can change. And the science is there and executable, then I think we should bring the money to, to the science and the World Academy should be the host and convener of something so important. So this is an appointment. You certainly are appointed as our finance minister, and we want you to, to help us uh, shepherd this initiative and bring a lot of money to those who need it most uh, through, through the vehicle of the World Academy. Uh, before I want to read a message that is a token of appreciation for all of you by Witold Kistner, who says, thank you for your contribution to a better view of yesterday, today, and tomorrow, where we ought to be and we, where we ought to live. So this is Witold that is writing this to all of you to say that you've done a good job. Uh, Gary, uh, the floor is yours. Well, I thought my job was over long ago, and you've been doing such a terrific job, Renato, and the whole panel has been so great. This is really what I kind of dreamed or hoped for uh, that would come out of the, our adventure into the past and the future, and you have all just given me more than I could have dreamed for or hoped for, so thank you for this. And beyond that, we've gone to something concrete. We've actually contacted Con constituted not only a finance minister, but a finance ministry. We've got a whole department now. <laughs> so I'd say it's a pretty good day's work. Uh, on the issue of multilateralism, as Donato mentioned, that we start off with a very important session tomorrow morning, or tomorrow morning, depending on where you live, uh, tomorrow afternoon in Europe. Uh, uh, we're starting a half an hour earlier than today at uh, 1500 with a, uh, one of the sessions is on the role of civil society in multilateral systems. And we've got the head of two largest NGO organizations uh, related to the UN and other experts in this. I think it, uh, it's, we agree that it's a critical issue 
for how we uh, gain greater access to the multilateral system, and the Secretary General does too. So we're, there's no debate. The question is, how do we do it? And that's what we, we already had a discussion on this in Geneva uh, at the December conference, but I thought we needed uh, to do more practical thinking. Uh, and David chick who uh, is the chef de cabinet in Geneva, the direct, director general's office is gonna chair that session. And if we can show him uh, something new, out of the box thinking, that's what we're really looking for. Uh, and uh, the other very challenging uh, discussion we're having starting at the same time, the parallel, is on the social responsibility of the media and the future of information. And I must say we're pushing this one uh, in spite of it's an uphill task uh, because this is such a challenging issue. Uh, we've had two discussions on it in the past, but I still think uh, it's one of the projects that Marcel uh, doesn't know that he's looking for. But I think something really original and unique that the world really needs is to tackle this issue of uh, the media. Uh, and uh, uh, so we're going to take a stab at it. And then we'll see if we have a marketable, marketable project. So thank you all for uh, staying with us today and contributing so richly. Look forward to seeing you tomorrow.